As a government employee, how would you know that your resignation is properly planned? It's a question that Peter, a government employee that I had assisted with his resignation, had recently raised with me, right? Now, after we had initially connected and we set up his resignation plan, Peter had noticed that our conversations became a little less frequent than initially. And he was concerned about this, so he reached out to me, wondering if everything was okay and if he's still on track. Now, in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you Peter's story. I've changed his name, obviously, to protect his identity. And I'm going to be covering three critical secrets to ensure that your resignation is on track. Now, again, whether you're thinking of retiring or resigning, this can still be helpful for you. And these are the same strategies that I use when I connect with members. So make sure that you watch this to the end because you want, you want to see this not just from a short-term perspective, right? It's about long-term planning. So stay tuned and let's get started with the, the first secret inside of this. Now, understand that in the beginning, a lot of activity takes place, right? So, for example, we would, we would be doing a lot of planning together. So if you had reached out to me, I want to start to look at how do we plan this, right? I want to get to know you better. I want to understand what are you trying to achieve? What are those goals? What's important to you, right? What's important to you? So, for example, do you want to save on tax? Uh, do you want to ensure that you create a legacy? Uh, do you want to ensure that your money is safe from the markets? You know, it's protected. Things like that. So once I get clear on the things that are important for you, my thinking cap comes on or my planning cap. And now my focus behind the scenes, right? Now when I'm connecting with you, behind the scenes when I'm sitting with your file, I want to start to analyze how do I create the plan. Now, though you can adjust your income every single year, Ideally, I would start to have a look at this over a long term, right? Meaning I want to start to look at, hey, what would happen over the next 10 years? What would happen over the next 15 years, 20 years, right? And so on. Basically, my goal when I'm creating a plan is how to ensure that you never run out of plan, right? This is how the plan gets created. And in order for me to do that, I'm starting to do some restructuring. Usually it's the case. I would have a look at your budget. There might be things in your budget that you don't need. Maybe it wasn't explained to you and I would analyze them and determine how you can create some savings, right? Maybe you've touted your investment policies a while ago. They're not performing the way that you want them to perform. Something's not right. I would have a look at it, see how we could optimize. Now notice it doesn't have anything to do with retiring or resigning. However, I have to see the full picture. Do you agree? I can't just work with the money that's coming from your pension fund. Uh, if I want to make sure that your uh, your route is successful, whether you're retiring or resigner, I'm going to look at the entire picture. So in Peter's case, I looked at all of this, understood all of his needs in order to plan that carefully. And we started to make some adjustments, right? Same can apply to you. If you're looking to save our tax, I want to see what's the maximum that we could save on tax. Now think about it. If you're saving a fortune in tax, say you save 100,000, 300, 500,000, right? Could we then use that money in a better way? We could, isn't it? So this then sustains it. And then I'll start to create more tax saving solutions for you, more investment solutions for you, more legacy planning solutions for you based on the money that we have saved, right? All geared for the one goal in my mind, which is to ensure that you never run out of money. Now, once the foundation gets set, keep in mind in the beginning, it may take some time to lay the foundation. So in the beginning, it means frequent meetings, right? But once the foundation gets set, then I want to make sure that you're getting monthly reviews. Right? Now, in Peter's case, I went through monthly reviews and I said to him, hey, Peter, when you get the, the review and you have a look at the investment performance, is your money growing or are you reducing in value? And this is one way for you to see as well, right? And he said to me, hey, I get to see my money growing. So I said, Peter, that's the truth. Remember when we first met, there were a lot of things that we had to, I know a lot of adjustments that we needed to make. And this is why we met so frequently. Now, it's not so much about making adjustments anymore because we made the right decisions in the beginning. Now it's more a maintenance thing, right? And this is why I personally like monthly reviews because monthly reviews for me, it's full transparency for you. I mean, think about it. If you got a, a review every single month, wouldn't you feel more in control? Wouldn't you feel that there's a lot more transparency? It allows us both then to ensure that if something's not right, we get to nip it in the bud straight away, right? We don't have to wait an entire 12 months before we review or have to analyze. But it's also my way of keeping in touch with you because 
If something changes inside of your lifestyle or there's been a family change or anything that adjusts, you reach out to me, I can then adjust the plan accordingly if need be, right? So this is why I feel monthly reviews are essential. And here's secret number two. Now for this one, I wanna actually talk about a cardiologist, right? Because I'm, I'm viewing with another specialist. So let's assume, and I won't use you in this example because touch wood, we don't want you to take ill, right? Let's say there's someone that you know, right? Who, who took ill and, you know, had to speak, meet with a cardiologist. Now, in the beginning, there's a bit of frequent consults, you agree, right? The cardiologist is now creating a plan, uh, wanting to assess the health. There's a lot of assessments being done. There's a lot of tests being done, maybe a lot of blood tests. You know, might be some theater that's getting involved right in the beginning, which means if you think about it, you're meeting the cardiologist or, you know, your, your, your colleague now is meeting the cardiologist frequently, you agree, on a regular basis. However, once that procedure is done and, and everything is worked on, don't you then move on to a maintenance thing? And the maintenance might be, for example, every six months or annually, again, maybe depending on your situation, right? Now, what happens there is the cardiologist is basically having the assessment done, making a professional determination for what's the plan going ahead. And once that treatment plan is done, the assessment is basically having a look at the medication that you're on. Is it working? You know, have you had a change in your lifestyle? Are there any adjustments? So then the review happens again, depending on how frequently the cardiologist is recommending that. Is it making sense to you? And the same happens here, right? From a financial planning perspective, once the foundation is set, this doesn't mean that I've forgotten about you at yeah, I'm not concerned about you anymore. And I share this with Peter, right? It's not at all. This is why I do the monthly reviews, right? I, I want to keep the open communication. Now, an annual review means one time in a year, especially if you're following my guidance, right? You can get to change your income. See? Every 12 months. So when you change the income, I like either a sit down or we connect online, you know, whichever is more convenient but I want to analyze everything that has happened, right? Over that last 12 months. I also want to have a look at what's happening over the next 12 months. For example, you know, was the income enough for you? Do you need a higher income? Do you need a lower income? What happened from a tax perspective? You know, when you followed the guidance, did you get a higher tax refund? Were we able to get the maximum in tax savings? What happened from the investment perspective? You know, is the investment growing? Is it uh, decreasing? If you took too much of an income, for example, and it was decreasing, I will analyze that situation for you. You know, do you have any other sources of income? So, you know, maybe you started your your own business or perhaps you got into, you know, some type of uh, rental agreement where you are now collecting a rental income. So we start to analyze everything again and then we may not create a whole new plan. We might adjust the current plan accordingly, right? Sometimes we may make, we may make changes. Sometimes we may not make changes. It's just like a cardiologist, right? Sometimes you, go, you may go in, the medication may not be changed. Sometimes it might be adjusted. Again, it depends on the situation and what's being presented at that specific moment of time. So in Peter's case, when we went through the last annual review, everything was okay. You know, he, he followed the plans of, to the T, he got massive amounts of tax saving, his capital was growing, everything was working out fine. Now I know Peter's personality between you and I, he is somebody who, he likes to find things to worry about, right? And I don't blame him because he's worked all his life for this amount of money. Not easy for him to trust somebody. Uh, Peter and I never met face to face. We always connected online via Zoom. So, you know, obviously he overcame his trust barriers in order for me to assist him with the resignation. But he, he, he doesn't want to feel alone, right? He wants to feel that I'm by his side and he's got me there as someone that he can count on whenever he needs, right? And I'll tell you the third secret shot. So when we did the audio review, Everything worked well. And I said to Peter, hey, listen, let's continue with this because you're following the guidance. We're seeing the results, right? This is again why monthly reviews are, are so nice. Because if you can see capital increasing all the time, then we know it's working. And if it's working, why change it? Which brings me to the third secret that I want to share with you. Quick access. And I share this with Peter, right? We had created, up, uh, created an internal system for him. So he's got a, a communication channel. If ever something needs adjusting, you just need to have quick access to me, for example, 
could be via telephone call or if I'm unable to answer because I'm consulting or maybe I'm shooting this YouTube videos, then you send me a WhatsApp, you know, or you pop an email to my team or reach out to us. But you want the quick access. So if ever you have a situation that, that changes or you want to notify me of something, be able to do so in a way that's easy and convenient for you. So I hope this has been helpful for you. When you get the foundation set correctly with the resignation, very really unlikely that you've got to do a lot of adjustments later on, unless you know maybe you maybe you have major changes in your circumstances, right? But also, again, you want to know that I've done the, the initial planning properly, and I've not constantly changed this thing year after year, right? If you've done the foundation correct, we shouldn't really need have to do that. I hope it's been helpful. Give me a thumbs up so I know that the video has been helpful, and post some comments below. Talk me through which of the the three secrets I shared with you today has been beneficial to you. And remember to share this with your other members so that everyone can be empowered inside of the community. I'll see you in the next video.